Hello and welcome to Comics for Tuesday. And if you're a small child, uh, just leave this video, go to any of my other ones, because today I'm going to be talking about mature content. And now when I say mature content, I'm talking nudity, obscene language, extreme violence, uh, ideas that require lots of thinking. Basically anything that you would think twice before giving to a child. Let's talk about it. So, mature content in comic books. Is it a good thing, bad thing? It is. You know, there's a lot of ways to introduce it in. It can be used for many purposes or none at all. In my opinion, it's a bad thing when it's mishandled, when it, when it takes very sensitive issues and isn't very sensitive with them, or when it's loaded with the, all this mature content and it's not actually doing anything, just gives it the illusion of depth. And then it alienates younger readers. So that's when I don't like it. And I'm not going to get into specific examples of that, because it's all opinion anyway. But when I do really enjoy seeing m mature content in comics is when it's handled well, when it's uh, coming from a writer who really knows what they're doing and knows the topic. It can make a story genuine. It can make, make it connect uh, in a very realistic way. So let's talk about some of my favorite examples of comic books using mature content. The Punisher. Punisher isn't really one of my favorite comic books, but I completely see why Punisher is important. You have the Marvel Universe filled with Spider-Man and Captain America and Iron Man, and they're always going on, you know, adventures basically. They'll get into fights with bad guys, and they very rarely end poorly. And the counterweight to that is the Punisher. He goes around pumping his villains full of lead, bodies left and right. And so it makes it feel like there are actual consequences within the Marvel Universe without having to change the superhero formula. X-Men. Since way back in the day, X-Men, the mutants from Xavier's school, have always been an analog for something real life. And it's been various things over the years. And it's been very important because this has enabled the writers of X-Men to be able to tackle whatever serious real-life issues they do in a much easier way. When you get it in your head and you're thinking context and trying to draw all these metaphors, then it's really easy to be impressed with the topics that X-Men can touch. Watchmen. Watchmen is one of the prime examples of a superhero story giving us superheroes that aren't just good guys. They're very complex, very flawed, they do some very bad things. And in the end, the good guys don't win. DC is known for the Trinity. Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, all beloved by children. And now whether you do a child-friendly story with them or an adult one, the fact is they have their frontline characters that are very widely known. So when DC broke off a little segment there, Vertigo line with characters like Swamp Thing and Constantine, and just dedicated them to being mature, child-unfriendly comics that were clearly defined from their mainstream ones, it showed a lot of respect to adult readers, and it showed that they want all audiences. Invincible. Invincible writer-creator Bobbert Kirkman is better known for The Walking Dead, which uses extreme violence to ratchet up emotional tension. That being said, I prefer Invincible. And Invincible uses that same extreme violence and is part of the half mockery, half love letter to the superhero genre. You know, it's like I mentioned before with The Punisher. Invincible gets into the same lighthearted superhero fights, and then the ones where it's just blood and gore and, and agony everywhere. And it's very useful in telling uh, stories that you can't really find anywhere else. And not just the blood and gore. Invincible is even very notable for featuring an instance of sexual violence that is my personal favorite that I've ever read in a superhero book. And it's just my opinion here. It is the most realistic that I've seen a superhero experience. And the unfortunate truth is that there's too much of it in superhero books, and it's more often than not handled poorly and just comes off offensive. So I'm very glad to see the Invincible take on it. 
Bitch Planet. So speaking of depictions of sexual violence, Bitch Planet is another great example of this. When they use sexual violence in Bitch Planet, it isn't glamorous in the slightest. It isn't an excuse to not really develop characters. It's really unpleasant, the way it should be. And, and Bitch Planet takes on a whole spectrum of issues, from that to gender dynamics to oppression, and it does it all brilliantly. Fun Home. This isn't the first time I've said it, but I love Fun Home. It, it makes you feel emotions ranging from happy to sad to just confused and not knowing what you're feeling. And it uses three-dimensional characters and sexual content. Uh, there's some swearing thrown in there. And the end result is you have a very real, heartfelt story because it is a woman telling you her own story in a medium that she loves. And just so we don't end on a bummer, I'm going to talk about Sex Criminals. Another book that uses sexual content, but, but in this case, it fills a very unique void here. So imagine, just pile together all the immature jokes that a pair of wacky nerds can come up with, and along the way you also explore the human condition. And just keep it lighthearted the whole time, that is Sex Criminals, and that's why it's one of my favorite comics out there. And if I could say just one thing to any comic book writers out there about the use of mature content, it's this. It's okay to use it. You don't have to use it. If you use sex or violence or language, just try to get the most you can out of it and keep in mind who you may be hurting. That's all I gotta say about it, and we're just about out of time. So, are there any mature themed books I didn't mention that you're a fan of? Leave it down in the comment section below. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and come back next time for Comics Cat Tuesday. Next time on Comics Cat Tuesday, we're gonna talk about the weather. Thanks for watching.